Hi, this is your host, Jeff Ragavan, and you're listening to Marketing Mix, where we hear from some of the most influential CMOs of today to discuss the strategies of tomorrow. Welcome to Marketing Mix. I'm here with Melissa Hobley. Melissa is the global CMO of OKCupid. Melissa, it's really awesome to have you on the show. Jeff, thanks for having me. This is so fun. Yeah, totally fun. I've been looking forward to this. And, you know, I think I'm constantly reminded every day when I'm on the subway of you and OKCupid, just because I've seen your ad campaigns everywhere. <laughs> I, I'll say thanks or sorry, either one. <laughs> no, I, I actually love it. I think it's, it's, it's so smart. And I, I figured that would be a really great way you know, for us to open up the show, I mean, a lot of people who are listening and have probably been on the subway and seen the DTF uh, with OKCupid. So I figured perfect opportunity for you to talk about it. Pretty wild, but not really wild in the terms of OKCupid. So how did you guys come up with this? Thanks for that. It's a couple of things. The, the first is OKCupid, and people are surprised to hear this. And frankly, when I started talking to the CEO of OKCupid when they were hiring a CMO. It was the first ever CMO and OKCupid had never done marketing, which is kind of crazy because the brand is 15 years old. They had never done an ad campaign. I mean, can you, it's, it's like remarkable. We were one of the OG dating apps. But by the way, I tell my single friends this, it, it means we know a lot. We have learned so much about how to match you and, and what works and what doesn't. And, and our, the whole like legacy of the company is data and, and hiring the best engineers in the world and a very diverse group of engineers, LGBTQ, people that identify as non-binary. You know, we're one of the only dating apps in New York City. So we just bring that flavor to the campaign. And so to bridge back to your question, which is, yeah, hey, that's a little provocative or very provocative. How DTF came about is really interesting to me. We were, this was 2017, um, the fall of 2017. I had just joined the company. And at that time, Me Too was just gaining momentum. It was really just picking up. There were several things happening in politically with the administration. Planned Parenthood and ACLU were receiving record levels of engagement and donation because people were very scared about certain rights. Uh, There's just a lot happening in the air. And for dating apps, at OKCupid in particular, we serve LGBTQ. We're very proud to be the most inclusive dating app in the world. Uh, We're very proud that we have always done that. And we've always aimed to have a really great experience there. So uh, we were trying to come up with something that spoke to what was going on with people. And and OkCupid is also one of the only dating apps that reflects back what you're dealing with and, and what's going on and what you talked about in the bar the night before. And so anyway, long story long, ETF, if you're not familiar, means down to fuck. Down to fuck is this label that typically straight guys say to other guys about girls and it's derogatory and it's it's associated with the word slut and some of these things that we just like let's archive this shit from dating and so we we worked with the team at widen i mean they're world class they do some of the most provocative interesting things in the world and we said let's flip dtf and the last thing i'll say about it is we 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 really did our homework and we talked to social psychologists and anthropologists and when you take a derogatory label and the impacted group takes ownership and flips that, they regain their power. And so look at queer, which is maybe one of the best examples. Queer was a derogatory negative label put on a marginalized group. That group has reclaimed that proudly. And now queer is something you use very proudly to to identify and tell people who you are and what you're about. And so that was the mission with DTF. What are some of the challenges that you guys have been facing with turning it upside on its head? Yeah, a lot. Um, um, we worked with, I'll call out that we worked with Maurizio Catalan, who's one of the most talked about artists of today. His work is at the Whitney and the Guggenheim. He's famous for the Golden Toilet, which 
you know, they famously offered to the White House in lieu of the Van Gogh as kind of a giant mm-hmm. middle finger, finger to the Trump administration. So a couple of things. We have these provocative images and you have this label that that historically has meant something sexual and derogatory. And so we had a lot of challenges and we knew that would happen. So certain cities banned it outright. So the city of Chicago, the city of San Francisco would not let us run on public transportation or any billboard uh billboards or real estate owned by the city, all that beautiful lakefront, you know, stuff where you see Glossier and other bonobos and whatever, Casper running these beautiful ads, all of that became off limits. Some of the, some of them, some of the out of home, you know, plays that you've got are owned by, you know, it's mom and pop. It's not all out on and Lamar and bigger, those bigger players. They wouldn't take it. We had certain, there are almost 20 DTF concepts and they range from things that you want, like down to fall head over heels. If you're on a dating app, you probably want that, but also down to fight about the president, down to mm-hmm. fantasize about 2020. So we also ran into limitations on um, on anything that was felt to be political, down to filter out the far right is a famous one. We don't think that's political because the far right is associated with homophobia, hate, bigotry, All things that are generally off limits, but a lot of places would not let us run that ad. So we had a lot of challenges, but we knew that. We also very smartly turned around and got press every time somebody said no. Um, There was a a famous petition started in Portland where we turned on DTF um, and blitzed the city. And a, 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 a group called Citizen Go started a petition that became so talked about that even Fox News and the New York Post covered it. And, you know, in the petition, they said these, because one of our images, um, several of our images are um, our LGBTQ community. And we have this beautiful image of a woman holding another woman. And they said, you know, you're promoting drug use, lesbian sex. And we said, yeah, yes, we are. We are absolutely promoting lesbian sex. Thank you for like <laughs> telling that story. Yes, right. you get it. Well, you guys, I got to say, Melissa, you guys are very brave. I think one for even going forth with something like this because it's turning so many heads. But I think at the end of the day, it's also created so much positive momentum for you guys with press and accolades and all of that stuff. Because some people are just like, we're not going to do that. That's just too much risk. So congrats. That takes a lot. And I think that's that's kind of propelled you guys into the forefront of like, wow, I didn't actually think a company would stand up for that much in public. And so I think that's something that is is a lot to be proud about. Well, thank you for that. You know, there's two reasons why we did it. One is OkCupid. I have not been here long enough to take credit for this, but OkCupid has a legacy of taking a stand on social issues over the last 15 years, you know, and and not being so revenue driven that they would not seek out the right paths. Two very quick examples. When the then CEO of Mozilla Firefox made homophobic statements, we immediately severed ties. Um, we were the first to create an actually workable solution if you identify as non-binary and doing that in a dating app, if you understand tech for the people listening that do is like building the empire state building and then going in and changing the plumbing. There's no business case that said you will ever recoup the cost and the time and energy that you will need to put on this with your engineers. So I think we, they had a legacy and a history of this, um, which enabled us to say it's, it's right to just to make a stance on some of these issues and to take a stance. Um, but you know, the other thing Jess, like, to be honest is we also had to do something bold to get attention, right? Like when mm-hmm. you are a brand that has been around a while and is now so competitive and you have, um, a lot of people fighting to be your dating app, you have to do something that's going to get their attention. And so it was also, you know, it was also in our interest to, to be bold and to be loud. We do not have the dollars that like a Nike would. You know, we could not buy every impression. We had to, the dream was, are you going to put this on your own Instagram? And maybe you'll do that because visually it's so interesting. Maurizio Catalan, you know, created these powerful images like down to finish my novel. And the girl is like sitting on a guy who's holding her up like a man, like almost like man furniture. Or is it because it's down to fantasize about 2020? And yes, I, oh my God, I associate with that. And you mean to tell me there's a dating app that filters on politics. Um, Whatever it was, 
we did end up on Instagram feeds. I mean, in the thousands, we could not believe it. That's so important, especially with today's day and age where everything is literally so polarized in the political realm that if you're dating someone, you might want to say, listen, I'm open to everybody having their own opinions, but I want to date someone who is not supporting a certain president, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, just look at what's happening in the news in the White House with <laughs> Kellyanne Conway and her husband. Like, how did they possibly get along at home, right, with their completely conflicting opinions? So I think that's great that you guys actually even have something like that on there where you could, you know, look for a mate that actually shares the same interests, right? Beyond just hobbies, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly right. And and listen, like Gen Z from like OkCupid, like a lot of dating apps, you know, 70% of our users are millennials. And so mm-hmm. they get a bad rap for being shallow or appearance based, or they're just swiping on hot or not. And so, but actually we see some of the opposite trends to your point on, on what's happening in the world. What we see is people matching on politics at an absolutely unprecedented rate. And again, we know, cause we've been looking at it for 15 years and you know, there's like, I can give you a million data points that are boring, but here's some that are interesting. Young women in particular in certain cities are prioritizing same politics over great sex. And what really that wow. is the new sex appeal is, did you vote? And are you, you know, who is the candidate that you are going to stand behind? And did you vote in the midterms? And what was your opinion on the Supreme Court hearing? It's so important. And, and, and how beautiful that you can say on a dating app now, if you didn't vote, swipe left. Or if you voted for <laughs> Trump, which is what we see a lot of our, you know, we're very, very big in cities. We know we see political leaning, again, especially with young women on the progressive side. And so, that's awesome. And, and, you know, we're the only dating app that's doing that. And so we're very proud of that. We're very proud to be the only one matching you on, on politics. And by the way, if you don't, if that isn't important to you, that's also okay. You can opt out of the filter questions that we give you. You know, moving on from DTF, which is incredible. You know, you guys also recently launched a whole Game of Thrones campaign, right? So you have profile badges that users can match and connect over interests and opinions as well. So Talk to us a little bit about that. Like, Yeah, yeah. So we started, again, like what makes the product different on OkCupid? Like people are always like, what's the difference between OkCupid and like every other dating app? And on ours, you have to answer 15 questions, set up your profile. But we now have badges and, and categories that you, if they matter to you, you go in and answer those questions. And you're actually powering the algorithm. So if you say politics matters... We got you. If travel matters and you could never date someone that didn't like have an updated passport, like we can filter on that too. And so we started leading into this. ACLU was our first, one of our first big badge partners. Um, you know, they, they mm-hmm. very much are on the front lines of fighting for LGBTQ rights. Whether you are identify as that or not, men, you know, most of our users care about that um, for their their friends and loved ones that are in that community. So we have these badges. We rolled one out just last week on Game of Thrones. So we're now the first dating app that can match you on your favorite TV show, starting with Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know, it was the first big global TV series to, to HBO's credit. So, and that's really fun. Um, Is Naked and Afraid going to be next? Naked and Afraid. Oh my God, Naked <laughs> and Afraid might be. Wait, what's your, wait, what's your favorite show? What, what, what would you? Mm, well, I would say I've recently just started, well, I just finished it yesterday, actually, the second season of The OA. Oh, the OA. Oh, my God. Oh, so good. It's so it's good. So good. I love the OA. I, that's on my list to, like, start binging this weekend. But, you know, here's the thing. Like, politics may really matter to you, and that's great. But but TV is one of those things that's, like, a really easy icebreaker, right? Or music. You see somebody in a bar, and let's say you follow this obscure brand, and you see someone wearing that T-shirt. Why we also are leaning into matching on these things and having badges and making it easy and prominent because you don't have to like dig through this profile. Like, you know, you're hunting on a LinkedIn for like, you know, one thing to call out. We want to make it really easy because TV shows are easy to connect on, right? Like you don't have to know someone well to say, oh my God, you watched the OA, me too. It's so good. Like, and that girl is like some kind of prodigy who, you know, (laughs) wrote it and stars in it and the whole thing. Awesome. And then one, you know, one question too, as far as, you know, you guys are doing all this amazing stuff, at least on the marketing side. And kind of positioning yourselves as, and even for me, like I see this stuff and I'm like, wow, this is really awesome. From a customer centric perspective, are you giving any tools to 
people who are using your service that might be evangelists of OkCupid? Because there are a lot of dating apps out there and dating sites. So anything with creators or influencers or anything in that world where you might be using creative through people, right, to get the message out even more. Yeah, yeah. We are working. Listen, I think we could do even more on this. We have been working with influencers steadily over the last over the last year and a half since I mm-hmm. since I joined and we started building the marketing function here. Dating is interesting because some people can't tell you enough about it. Like when I was, I am not single either, but I, when I was, and I dated New York for, you know, over 10 years, I love talking mm. about it, but some people don't. So it's this balance of finding the right people. Our mission is like match on what matters and whatever matters to you. If it's TV, if it's a good margarita, if it's politics and you can never date a voter of X, Whatever that is, we power that um, because many dating apps are location based, and that's about it. And so, um, so, so we we are, you know, I think we're still not done figuring out how to arm consumers to go out and like tell that message. What's great is we because we are really good at this. We have a lot of so many success stories that people do pop up and talk about it. I get invited to five to 10 weddings a week, which is so lovely. Because oh people, my God. <laughs> it's so lovely. Now listen, some of those people want us to like sponsor the cocktail hour and good on you. Uh, like, at least that's the question. We don't do that by the way. Um, but, um, but you know, that it's, it's really lovely. We're featured in the New York times wedding section more than any other dating app by a factor of four is just one of our measures of like, we're really good at this. We have so many success stories. So, you know, we're constantly trying to figure out how do we, how do we like arm those people more to go out and tell the stories? The nice thing is the stigma is now gone. You know, what happened when Tinder came on the scene a couple of years ago is it, it really helped accelerate dating and, and made the stigma totally go away. And so now you see all the time and I I obviously follow our hashtag and People tag us all the time, like, you know, I never thought I'd meet my person. I was going through a dark time. My friend Mamie set up my profile on OkCupid. He proposed last week. We're getting married, you know, in the fall. There's just beautiful stories. And people do now go out and tell that much more than they did, you know, five, eight years ago. Now, if you're single and you're not on a dating app, your friends are like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Well, listen, Melissa, I, I really appreciate you coming on. And I think this has been, it's been great. Obviously, we have a ton of guests on the show that talk all about the marketing they're doing, whether it's out of home, whether it's digital. And I think you bring an entirely new perspective here. And it was great to really dig in and talk to you about the whole DTF campaign. And, you know, congratulations on all that amazing success. Oh, Jeff, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. You know, we're really humbled to have the chance to talk about that. And and we're really proud of it and proud of the, you know, kind of positive social conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to Marketing Mix. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Be sure to share and subscribe. Until next time, take care.